Hello everyone, welcome back to the course. In this lecture, the course we're going to be making a soundboard. So, uh, what, are, what we're going to be doing there is basically just a very simple soundboard with only a few functions. But I just want to go ahead and reinforce our knowledge of sound and the sound category and how we can apply block-based programming through Scratch. And we'll just go to go a new project in the top right of our MyStuff folder here. That's what I'll do. Alright. And once you're there, and of course, again, I strongly advise you to follow along with me in making these projects. Of course, you don't have to do the art code, title, everything like that, exactly the same as I am. Really, what I care about is that you actually understand it and don't get lost or anything like that. So, I'm just going to be writing this soundboard. Oh, soundboard F, not soundboard F. I want to do just soundboard. Okay. I want to get rid of the cat. Sorry, Mr. Cow, we don't need you today. We'll get a stage. I'm just going to make a background, or a backdrop called background. I'll just go ahead and go bitmap and make that dark gray here. That's good. And then we'll get vector. So it's just kind of like where I'm going to put my buttons and stuff. So I'm thinking that I'll have buttons that will just play notes and a lot of like sliders and stuff. They'll change like volume, pitch, pan. We'll talk more about pitch, pan in this lecture as well. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go paintbrush, new spread. I'm not going to name it or anything like that yet. I'm just going to go ahead and go to the sounds tab, get rid of the sounds. I'm going to go choose a sound from the library. And I'm not, for this entire course, I'm not going to be using sounds uploaded from the computer, I don't think. Um, might do it later for advanced projects if we need to, though. Um, and always be sure to, if you're going to share a project, don't use copyrighted sounds without the author's permission, especially. Um, so, let's go ahead and look at these. So, what I want to point out here is that you might notice that some of these, not all of them, but some have a letter before the title of these sounds. So, um, for example, you know, A bass, electric bass, elect and uh, ELEC stands for electric, electric piano. And so basically in musical instruments, in case you don't know, there's seven notes, A through G, A, B, C, D, E, E, F, G. And basically there's sharps and flats in between all seven, but really it's uh, scratch doesn't mess with those. So it's just A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. So if we go ahead and look at these, we can just go electric piano, for example, hover over the purple dot with the play button to uh, go ahead and play it and just demo it out. And then we'll go, uh, we click on it to put on a project. Uh, also, you can go ahead and carry around uh, sounds using your backpack, just fun fact. And also sounds, anything to do with sounds, whether it's values such as volume, pitch, or pan, or sounds themselves are always class specific. So they'd only be for your stage or only be for your sprites. Uh, they're not universal at all. Another thing is I want to say real quickly is if you're messing around with this editor, which we talked about in the sounds lecture whenever we went over that, but uh, I'm actually going to uh, just advise you to not make any changes without making a copy as a backup. So for example, let's say you, so you did all these crazy things that stuck like that. Of course, you can then undo them, but if you change the tab and go back, you can no longer undo it. It's grayed out. So now you have this, which is not what you want. So you, you can just get rid of that and switch your backup, which is what it initially was. I'm just going to get rid of the two since I don't need it. Just as a little demonstration of why you're going to want to make it backup whenever you're messing with the sound editor. Anyways, let's go ahead and just make a button. And I'll just go ahead and make it very simple. I'll just go... Now what am I going to do? Something like this. I'm thinking a peach color like that. Five is good for a border width. I'd like to make it a little bit smaller so we can fit them in rows and columns and such. Uh, that's good. Let's just go A. Sans serif is fine, so I'll just stick with that. Then I'll make this to fill up almost my entire button. Alright, that will be good. I'll name this unselected. I'll get a new costume. I'll name that selected. All right, just like this. Actually, what I'll do is I'll just duplicate the color using the dropper tool. Then I'll just increase the saturation and fill in that. So now we can actually go ahead and do this. So we can just go when clicked forever if forever if else actually I stand corrected and then we'll go with touching mouse pointer and I'll go ahead and do a costume to where the costume switch to where it fits 
touching the mouse pointer is selected, otherwise it'll be the unselected costume, so that way if it's hover hovering over, it'll be a, the costume that we want it to be, whether it's darker or lighter, uh, just with a similar co a color with different contrast is what we're looking for there. So, um, what we can do is just something like this, I like to keep my scripts separate and organized. So nothing happens when we click it, but at least we can hover over it and select it and whatnot. So, let's uh, talk for a moment about um, getting this to play. If we go wind sprite clicked, uh, where's wind sprite clicked, here we go. We go start sound, and I'm doing play sound until done. I'm, the reason why I'm not doing that, and the reason why I'm doing start sound instead is because in case we want to have blocks under it, we, can't, we have to wait for that sound to finish, and we want them to execute instantly. Uh, or maybe we do, but um, let's say we do this. Um, oh, then what do you know? It goes ahead and plays. Just like so. Alright, and uh, what we can do as well is we can actually make a variable called a volume. Uh, I find it easier to do sliders rather than buttons unless you want to be super fancy because uh, it, it just is easier to just drag these around and you don't have to do any art or anything. It's just kind of done for you. Uh, and if we were to just go here, back to our code and go when clicked, let's just get our variables set up here. Set a volume. And it got rid of my variables since we didn't need it, but I'm um, just going to go. Oh, I want, we want it to show actually. We want it to be default 100 because uh, that's what volume is by default. I'll just make uh, when clicked set volume to 100 as well. I also make a script for forever set volume uh, to the a volume volume uh, value. I'll just pass that to the parameter. It's like this. Now we can change the volume there. So zero would be no sound and 100 would be sound because volume has a range from zero to 100 and it goes by percent. So if we set this slider, we set the volume to whatever value the slider is, we can just control it from the slider and then change our volume from 0 to 100, 100 being the loudest, 0 being the softest. Just like so. Um, fairly simple. Uh, it'll just keep running until we stop the project, of course. So, uh, let's do the same for pitch real quickly. I want to talk more about pitch and pan, though, before we do that. So, of course, there's this one. And so we have change and set volume. But we also have change and set while well, this drop-down parameter where we can do pitch or pants less slash right let's talk about pitch for a moment so i'm just going to set it to zero because zero is the default value for pitch so it's just going to work just fine but if, if we go higher than zero let's say 100 it'll be a higher oh it'll be a higher frequency then negative 100 will be a lower frequency because below zero so based on whether it's above or below zero which is the default again that determines the frequency which makes it sound higher or lower and then zero's the default, so I'll just set it back there, and I'll actually make it go there. Beginning of every project, and then also I want to talk about pan. So default value for pan. There is a limit on pan, just like volume. How volume is from zero to hundred. Pan is actually from negative hundred to hundred, and zero is the default. So if we go zero, nothing's going to happen. Whether you're wearing headphones or not. The reason why I bring up headphones is because if you're wearing headphones, you're only going to be able. You're, that's the only way you're going to be able to notice changes or effects in the pan. So. Uh, for example, um, pan basically determines what, uh, how much volume is in each earphone of your headphones. So if there is uh, more pan on the right side, then it's going to be louder in your right ear and softer in your left ear. So it balances out both automatically. So if one goes louder, then the other ear will go softer or they're just equal. And zero is equal volume in both ears. Uh, default, just like most sounds in music you're going to hear with headphones and so if you don't use headphones you're not going to hear any effects with what i'm about to do so just bear with me for a moment if you are not a headphone user i apologize um i'm going to go ahead and get set to 100 and then that means it's only going to be in the right ear because that's the max value so if you're wearing headphones you would have noticed that and negative 100 would be only in the left ear because that's the other opposite polar end just like so now and if we go back to zero it'll be default equal sound in both ears now what if we did something like 50 somewhere in between that would be 50% more in the right ear and 50% left, less in the left ear is what that would be. Like so, negative 50 would just be the vice versa of that, so 50% louder in the left ear and 50% less loud in the right ear. Okay, and I'll just set it back to zero, default, boom. Alright, so, um, let's go ahead and go set to zero here. And also, um, if we go ahead and go 
make a uh, probably not, got, not gonna mess with pan at all in this project but what we can do is you can go ahead and go pitch because there's a lot more variable stuff you can do with pitch uh if you want to go ahead and mess with like samples or make your own little snippet of a song or something like that um if we go ahead and go here um we'll do the same process we want it to be shown uh and then we want to also set it to zero by default because there's the default value for pitch i know 100 is the default for value but zero is for pitch um of course if we go ahead and set our pitch indefinitely to the value of a pitch and we'll be all good to go all right uh maybe this was hmm i didn't carry a difference let's see Yeah, I did not hear a difference. Okay, so forever set. See, does volume work? Oh, maybe we have to click it again. All right, so let's try it. It only lasts for about two seconds, so it's kind of hard to. But we have a lot more variance with what we can do now with our note. So, uh, however, we can only increase pitch, pitch of this. What if we want to decrease? Well, we can just go change slider range by right clicking. We can set our minimum value to negative 100, and we're all good to go. What you'll notice is it goes by increments of 2, so we can never actually set it to 0. So, what we can do is we can change our slider range again. We can just go ahead and go. 101 or negative 101 it'll offset it by one on one direction but at least we can actually set it at zero at its resting uh, point uh, now the reason why I'm leaving a little bit of a space here is so we can actually stop the sound while it's playing or sounds if we clicked it several times I'll just go paintbrush and I'll make a tiny little dot here and I'll just go outline I'll say two pixels I'll go like a rose color on the inside and uh, something like that Uh, uh, maybe a little bit more of a border. Not that much. This much is good. Something like this. Lop it right here. And uh, what we can also do is just name this on selected. Make it a darker red for selected. All this will do is just stop that sound for that note. Alright. Um, and what we can also do is go when clicked. Or ever, if else, touching mouse pointer, then switch costume to selected, otherwise switch to unselected, like this. Won't do anything if we click it, but at least it works if we hover over it. Now, what if we do want it to do something when we click, we can just go and sprite clicked, or we can just go if touching mouse pointer and mouse down with our and operator there and just go forever if under our when clicked. But uh, I'm just going to go and sprite click because it's a little bit simpler for this. And um, I'll just go events and I'll go broadcast a stop. In fact, that's why I'll name this sprite as well. I'm going to name my other sprite just a button. I'm going to cost you what happens whenever we receive a stop, and I think that'll just be um, a stop all sounds, right? And we did start, so we can actually do that. So we can just start and stop. Very cool. And there is a lot more we can do with this. We can add more notes. We can add more uh, volume pitch. We can add pan for all of them. We can make it so it's outlined a certain color if it's playing. Uh, we can make it so we can switch the instrument. We can do all sorts of really powerful things within Scratch. But we're just going to do a few things in this lecture just for time. And I don't want to bore you too much. And I also want to give you guys the freedom to mess around with this on your own. And uh, just really expand on this project because it's very expandable. Uh, one thing I'm thinking, though, is to actually do a, a little amplitude measure. And amplitude is basically a way of saying volume. And uh, the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to have some dots here on the right. And you might have seen these before, this type of thing. But uh, what I'm going to do, I think you might actually recognize it a little bit once I actually do this. Or um, draw it out, at least. 
I want to be about that size is perfect actually. And I'll go green. And be, these are basically just so we can measure volume nice and easy. And uh, make this, uh, actually a tad bigger would be good. I don't know why there's this little piece, you know you see that little piece hanging off there? Oh, okay, it could only be whenever we're not in full screen, it's just a little bit buggy. That could be it. But, um, let's go ahead and duplicate. And just make sure this is aligned as well. It has to be like really aligned. So what I'll do is I'll actually get it like perfectly overlapping. Just like so, and then I'll just hold right. Ah, uh, like so. And then what I'll do is I'll just go copy. I think I'll go left. Just want to make sure it's lined up. Just going to copy paste once more. Actually, what would be more efficient is if we copy paste this whole thing. You'll see why I'm doing this. Uh, it's just to add a really cool little animation visual effect. It can also help us visualize um, what we're doing in terms of volume. So, I want to make sure this is about the same distance or at least close we can possibly get to being the same distance. Uh, something like that probably is as best as going to go. And we'll just go copy paste one more time here. Line everything up. So now we're all good in the x-axis. Let's just increase the y. And um, we should be good after that. I'm using arrow keys again, by the way. It's just to uh, do these little movements here. So I gotta make it go left. Okay, perfect. And just a little bit like that. Okay, so we should be should be good, about good there. And what I want to do is I want to make costumes for this. So I want to make, uh, you know, you're probably like, well, why did you spend so much time on making uh, a bunch of dots? I want to make a little amplitude bar. Um, as I said, so I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, I feel like the spacing is not perfect. Yeah between these two is not great but um that's all right i'll just go ahead and go for now um we can go with transparent all right and uh what we can also do is just make costumes for this uh this color is good Right, and you might start to recognize this as you see what I'm doing. If not, that's fine. It's just something that comes up. Uh, and the um, electronic uh, world of sound and messing with sound and music and things like that. It's basically a format they use for measuring amplitude. And uh, of course, it's not always going to increment and go down by two. But in this case, it will. Uh, I mean, sometimes it'll be like up more on one side, oftentimes due to pan or other factors. But um, I'll just go ahead and do something like this, and then we'll go. Uh, name the costumes like this. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Basically, it has to do with how many dots there are, right? Twelve. Fourteen. Uh, yeah, wait, two, four, six, eight, ten. I suppose this would be zero, right? It was scrolled up so I couldn't really see my, my bad. Just 
just name these accordingly 14 and lastly 16 you don't have to name these just the way i'm doing it though it's just purely how i'm going to do it so uh, when clicked i'll just make the default costume zero all right just like this and um what i'm thinking i'll do is i'll go ahead and make the oh this has to do with the volume so of course, now the volume is a public variable, right? So forever if, um, yeah, well, I'll do. Because based on, uh, we have eight costumes that aren't zero, right? So based on the volume of, uh, of our A here, we can determine what we want these costumes to be. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And so I'll go ahead and set the costumes to so, zero, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. 10, 14, and then lastly, 16 okay and so what this is going to do is it's basically going to be based on the a volume so if a i'll just say if a volume equals zero then it's going to be zero and if greater than zero and less than something so let's go Uh, we'll do, um, hmm. let's try like 15 maybe. So I'm just going to go by increments of 15. So basically if it's between 0 and 15, it'll be this. If it's between 15 and 30, it'll be this and so on. Just to kind of determine what the costumes will be. Because I want it to be correlated with the amplitude. If we added more notes, we could take the average of them. Uh, push that uh, push that value to a new variable and then based on that variable that is the average of all the volumes of all the notes that will determine the overall amplitude of the entire soundboard. I know it's a little bit a uh, lot to work with there but um, yep I'll just go like this uh, between 60 and 75 75 and 90 all right and then once we get to 90 we'll uh we'll go between 90 and 99 or i guess uh yeah we'll go less than 100 and here's what i want to do i want to increase each of these by one so that every single uh every single number is accounted for because it's not greater than equal to and which basically means it can be either the number it's on or anything greater than that, but I'd rather do it so that every single number is included. So, uh, something like this. Um, yeah, that'll work perfectly. And then all we have to do is uh, set our A volume to, if it's 100, then it'll be 60. Of course, this whole thing was completely optional, but it can make it a little bit, that can be cool to do. Just like that. But I kind of wanted to do that while it's playing, uh, rather than while it's um, based on what the volume is set to. So what you can do is um, broadcast a message. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah, broadcast a message called a play, and that'll happen there. And um, I want them to happen at the exact same time, actually. And then when I receive a play, um, what we can do is set playing to, we don't want this, we want this to be hidden. Actually, what we can do as well. All right, 
all we can do as well is we can go ahead and go um, with our a pigeon or no, this is the wrong drop down parameter. We want to go playing and we want to hide playing as well, right? Um, and then basically we'll just set it to we'll just set playing to one whenever we receive it and we'll set it back to zero after two seconds because if you remember it's exactly two seconds. I'll zoom in if you can see it. It's uh, two seconds though for our um, electric piano to be done playing our electric piano note. Uh, I'll go ahead and go wait two seconds in between one and zero. So basically if it's one it's playing, if it's zero it's not playing. We, if we only want this to be effect while it is playing, then we can just wrap the whole thing in an if. I can wrap all of these ifs inside a much bigger if. It basically means if playing equals one, and then that's how we can determine uh, the amplitude of what's being currently played just in a little visual visualization. This becomes really useful once we have several notes. Of course, we only have one at the moment, which is fine. All right, so let's see. All we can do is maybe an if else then, if this isn't working, and the if else will just be switch costume to costume zero, or that will be what's in the else part of the else if. Anyways. So now our if else is plugged in, except for the else contains switch costume to zero. Just like so. However, the volume happens to fade as the note progresses, and this does not. However, there's a way we can do this, but um, it just kind of complicates things more and more. And I want to keep it. I want to keep things as simple as possible for this lecture. Um, and so this is just kind of like a thing for fun right here. It really is all it is. But um, let's pass around with our pitch. Pretty cool. So, you know, there's already a lot you can do here. You can add more notes. You can add different instruments. You can make like some drums down here. You can make any something else down here. Um, and you can make it so that like maybe this turns a certain color if it's playing. Like, uh, for example. Uh, for example, we could do, um, when I, when I receive a play, yeah, here's what we could do. I'm going to make a copy of each of these costumes. And we can go a playing, or no, playing selected. And then our other one would be playing unselected. And I don't think I spelled this right. Just gonna check my other one here. Okay. And I'm just gonna convert the bitmap. I'm thinking blue. I'll make the border blue. I'll convert back to vector. Same thing here. And basically, all we'll do is if um, if playing equals one. Or sorry, this would be if playing equals zero, so if it's not playing, then this is true. And if the sound is playing, then it would be our other costumes. Just like this. Uh, let's see, did I do that right? Playing equals one. So now it'll be blue if it is playing. And so now it's really easy to tell if something's playing or not. Um, because we have this meter, and then we also have our uh, actual button. And uh, I'm actually I'm also going to do something to where, because if we go ahead and stop all sounds, this will still be blue for a little while. So what we want to do is uh, when we receive a stop, we want to immediately change the costume as well, or well. Better yet, just set playing to zero instantly. Um, this way, we can easily go ahead and um, immediately set our playing to zero instead of waiting two seconds. Of course, I'll wait two seconds here. Um, fairly, fairly simple. In fact, it might actually make. Uh, nah, that wouldn't make more sense. Okay, so uh, basically, we have a fully configured very basic soundboard for one note. 
there's, I mean, there's really more we could do. There's always more you can do with this, but it's just something to get started with, get the ball rolling. Uh, you guys can feel free to add more notes, um, add more features in general, really add more values, add more sliders, add more buttons. I just cannot say, I guess I'll just try again. Um, I like how there's a download feature there so you can download in case you just go offline and you're not able to get back on. I'll save this meter. Uh, and then, of course, all you need to do if you want to make more notes is you just have to make new variables and then rename those variables accordingly, rename your sprite accordingly, and make a stop button version of it, uh, or, stop, or stop version of the stop button for it. And um, really, all you're going to need to do there. Um, so, yeah, it's. Uh, I think I'll do one more note just to demonstrate the process in case you guys want to go ahead and expand on this, which I encourage you to do after this lecture. So if we go be stop and be button. Uh, so now we're all renamed. Let's just change our text. Actually, before we do anything, I want to go ahead and drop this. Then I want to get rid of these. Uh, sprites this week, since it's, uh, it was converted to bitmap, we can't edit the text of these. Uh, And so what I want to do is I want to go ahead and um, make a vector version so we can do that. Let's see, what is this blue? 5500, 100, okay. Oh, yep, this has to be playing unselected. Or, well, no, playing selected, since I have the other selected one. And then this one would be playing unselected. Okay, so just like that. Now we just got to go here, uh, we're going to make it like that, um, B, uh, like that, and I just, I'm just deleting the playing version of the costumes because, again, we can't go back and edit the text, so I'll go 5500, 100. Alright, so I'll just go bitmap. I'll convert these back to vector just because. Um, we're going to want to do our. Uh, actually, gonna, we're, yeah, we're going to want to get the uh, position figured out. It's like, for example, this, I want it to be here. So, Y7, X186. Oh, we're already here. Uh, and I'll do the same thing. So, just so nothing gets overlapped or anything like that. Um, this would be 140, negative 187. And then I'll just copy that over, except for I want this one to have a lower Y value. So I'll just try uh, 90 or something like that. See what that even looks like. Um, that's fine. And maybe a little bit lower. I'll try 85 and call it a day. Oh, that is not 85, that's 185. A little bit too high there. There we go. And uh, B stop. Uh, we want it to have the same. Um, uh, where are we here? Uh, this one is negative 226. 35 and we just want to have a lower y value again so i'll just try like 80 see what see where that gets us a little bit higher 83 eh, that's good okay you're gonna want to keep this spacing in mind if you're gonna do more than one more note by the way of course uh now we have to just figure everything else out so we got our um costumes all good to go we got this is all good to go um what we're gonna want to do is maybe make b playing and a playing that's what i'm thinking like B playing. I'm gonna rename the other playing A playing. Not confusing at all. Well, at least this makes it a little bit less confusing. Um, I'm gonna just go B playing. Oh, I gotta make B pitch B volume, right? So I just gotta plug in my parameters once I've made a B version of all the A variables we had. So like A volume will be B volume. A pitch will be B pitch. I'll just do that. Um, once we've done that, we can go ahead and swap out our values. Don't have to do this in any order, of course. You're not running the program anyways. Um, just go ahead and hide this. We do want to show pitch and volume. Alright, uh, let's get this lined up. Perfect. Perfect. 
and lined up again. All right, great. Very cool. So we have our volume all good to go. Change the range of our B pitch slider to negative 100 and 101. Just like so. And uh, now we just got to go make sure that everything is in check here. Oh, we almost forgot the most important part. Get the new sound. We want to just go B lack piano or whatever instrument you chose. Uh, just the next version of it. So B lack piano. Something like that. And um, like that. Do, 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 do. Making sure I'm not missing anything here. Let's move on to our meter. And um, we'll go ahead and go. A just normal volume variable and what volume is going to do is going to be the total volume of everything average so uh, what this will do is um basically let's actually hide it um, and then I'll hide it here as well I'm gonna do a do we already have a B playing yes we do okay Yeah, we want to hide variable volume, but uh, oh, we're just normal volume. There we go. And uh, why is pitch hiding now? Maybe I like clicked out of the wrong one. Okay, yeah, for some reason that just kind of disappeared. <laughs> um, basically, when clicked, we'll just make a separate script for this. When clicked forever, uh, we want to make set volume just like normal volume to uh, the average so um, a volume plus B volume divided by 2 and that's how we're gonna get the average of course these numbers can change so let's say you have three let's say you have a volume plus B volume plus C volume you want to go divided by three because there's three values but since we're only working with two here we're just going to go divided by two so you can calculate the average and then we'll set volume to that just normal volume to that um, when I receive B play so B planked one so B uh, where is it? Yeah, there we go. Um, something like that. We should be all good now. I'll just go ahead and swap out every instance of A volume for volume. Because this is only applicable if we have one note to work with. I'll take out all my A volumes first and just duplicate these and plug them in. All right, now, uh, once you've gotten rid of all your A volumes, uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and make some more duplicates with this volume button value right here. I apologize if the video cut for a second. Uh, that was my fault. But nothing changed since then. I just made a couple duplicates of this volume value just so we can plug them into our slots here in our operators. Eh, let's see, do we have enough? Alright, so uh, we have if eight playing equals one. I want to also do two ors. So what this is going to be is just going to be um, if so either a playing. Well, actually, I don't need to do this and just keep things simple. I'm just going to go or. And of course, we can just keep expanding ORs if we needed to, but all of A playing, all of B playing. Uh, and so if either of these equals one or both of them, uh, then this will take effect. Otherwise, we won't see this little amplitude meter. So let's just see if this whole thing even works now and just see if it all comes together. Oh, I never uh, did the code for B stop. I don't think I just got to go broadcast B stop. And got to make sure that that is received. Uh, and then we'll do B play. And we should be all good. Let's just test it. That's weird. So, looks like there's a problem with the costumes. Should be a simple fix. Let's see.
Yep, looks like we just gotta plug our values in correctly. Gotta go beat playing, that's my bad. And we'll just see if it all works now. We could also have a master stop button that stops it for all of them. You could even have a selection tool that has it to where you can change the volume equalized for several of the same kind of note. This is just really an example of what you can do within Scratch. Notice how we've already changed, drastically changed uh, these sounds just from some of these tools we have here. And uh, how it also takes the average of amplitude, which is really cool. So, so uh, ba based on the collective sound of what's being played, it'll determine the strength of this bar here. So we go all the way up to, up to the very top. It'll uh, go ahead and be like that. Um, it'll be up to the very top red bar. Even with two notes, you can make some really cool sounds and effects. But uh, with seven, you can pretty much start making your own little snippets of songs, pretty much, if you'd like. And um, feel free to add more notes. I expand to this. I just want to make a second notes so that you could uh, kind of see an example of what it would look like. And there's just so many features of my list throughout this lecture of things you could add. In fact, whenever I go to the project page and write out the notes and credits, I'll uh, include that. I'll be um, I'll just say uh, click on the circles to stop sounds letters to play sounds and sliders to change sounds uh, i'll just go and say a uh, version um author well i guess i'll just do my username scratch course and date published i'll just say 10 21 19 date created date finished whatever and uh lastly we'll do um uh, some things to consider for remixing, add a notes C through G, add sliders, add master stop button that stops all sounds, add master pan slider that pans all sounds just like so and uh now that we've got that um something something along the lines of this we can go ahead and uh pretty much just think about brainstorm what we can do for the future i don't know if i'm going to come back and work on this but this will of course be in the studio for this course and um you can always take a look at this remix it things like that as usual and uh, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next lecture. I know this one was a, one of these shorter projects, but I think we covered a lot. And uh, even if all this wasn't related to sound, I just want to reinforce and have you guys get used to programming in general with this. And uh, next project is Interactive Story. It'll be pretty fun. That's kind of a a lot of uh, you deciding how you want to do that. And um, after that Interactive Story, we'll move into our advanced projects. Sorry, our intermediate projects. But before I meet intermediate projects start, there'll be a little, uh, little thing where we'll go over data types, getting a little review of that, a little review of strings, booleans, characters, integers, just to make you a little bit more comfortable with that, because I know it's kind of been loosely defined throughout this course uh, for a reason, but I think the data types will review will help really concrete um, the order in which I've been teaching this. And um, I look forward to seeing you guys in the interactive story. And I uh, hope you guys continue on and continue to go to the interactive or intermediate projects and so on. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next lecture.